Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Iran threatens to attack Israel if America intervenes in Syria. We have a news-making interview about Hillary Clinton and her role in Benghazi with General Jerry Boykin. Also, we interview Congressman Doug Lamborn on why we should defend Israel. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps. You're watching PIJN News. And on this show, we like to report the news, discern the spirits, and pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Let's get right to our first story. The New York Times reports Iranian lawmakers and commanders issued stark warnings to the United States and its military allies this Tuesday, saying any military strike on Syria would lead to a retaliatory attack on Israel, fanned by the flames of outrage. The warnings came against the backdrop of rising momentum among Western governments for a military intervention in the Syrian conflict over what the United States, Britain, France, and others have called undeniable evidence that Syrian President Bashar al-Assad and his forces used illegal chemical weapons on civilians last week, killing hundreds. Mr. Assad had accused the insurgents, the rebels, who were trying to topple him of using those same munitions. Well, enter Iran, which itself came under chemical weapons assault by Iraq during its eight years of war in the 1980s. They have been a loyal ally of the Syrian government. And Iranian hardliners often say Syria is Iran's first trench in the potential war with hostile Western powers. Now, Iran has blamed Israel for the conflict in Syria, saying Israel's manipulating and trying to bring down Mr. Assad, but Israel's remaining neutral. In the case of a US military strike against Syria, the flames of outrage of the region's revolutionaries will point, point toward the Zionist regime, said the semi-official Farsi news agency, quoting an Iranian official. In Israel, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said Tuesday that after security meetings in Tel Aviv that the state of Israel is ready for any scenario. We are not part of the civil war in Syria, but if we identify any attempts whatsoever to harm us, even by Iran, we will respond and we will respond in strength. Now, Iran used to oppose the use of chemical weapons, but it turns out now they're supporting the Assad side of the argument, and he is the one who deployed those weapons. It's gonna be difficult to sort that out. On the other side though, World Net Daily reports that the US considers a response to what it calls the chemical weapons attack by uh, the Assad regime that killed hundreds of civilians, and actually, the evidence now points to the rebel forces that use those weapons. And here's a picture of some of those civilian rebel forces using the chemical weapons to try to overthrow the government. While our own Secretary of State, John Kerry, accused the Assad regime of these cowardly crimes and moral obscenities that shocked the conscience, Kerry claimed the Obama administration had undeniable evidence that Assad was the one behind the chemical weapons attacks. But these pictures may show otherwise, or is it the American CIA who's giving weapons to the rebels that may be complicit? Maybe the Obama administration is the one who armed those chemical weapons or empowered them to steal chemical weapons to use against innocent civilians. Are we just as guilty? Well, let's take a short break. When we come back, we're gonna have a news-making interview about Syria with my dear friend, General Jerry Boykin, you don't wanna miss the things he has to say about Hillary Clinton and Benghazi. Let's take a short break. Fighting the culture war between church and state, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about Israel? Do you wanna help prevent a second Holocaust? Listen, I'm a Christian chaplain and my website is PrayInJesusName.org, but we need you to take action and sign a petition there to defend Israel. In fact, the Obama administration is doing the opposite. Here's the first petition we want you to sign, and that's stop the US taxpayer funding of the Muslim Brotherhood. Did you know your taxpayer dollars are promoting Islam overseas? Here's a picture of Hillary Clinton. She was laughing during the Benghazi hearings. 
But the bigger story is why as secretary of state was she sending American taxpayer dollars to fund Islam in Egypt and Syria and Libya, not only that, but in the Palestinian authority to oppose Israel. Here's a picture of American F-16s being sent to the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. We need to stop American taxpayer funding of that. And where is this going? Well, it's really moving to Iran. Here's the president of Iran, newly elected guy. Uh, but did you know he's just as radical as Ahmadinejad? This new president, Hassan Rouhani, is a radical Muslim cleric, former chief of their nuclear weapons program. When they build nuclear weapons, who do you think they're gonna target but our friends in Israel? Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu warned us when he gave his speech at the UN that they are in the final stage of building an Islamic bomb. Here's a petition you can sign. Defend Israel and protect the Jewish homeland. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. In fact, petition Congress to move the capital of Israel to Jerusalem and put our U.S. Embassy there. Sign a petition at PrayInJesusName.org and we will fax that to your congressman and it's free. Please take a stand today. Defend the Jewish people. Visit PrayInJesusName.org to stand with us and stand with Israel. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. This is PIJN News. I'm joined in the studio today by my good friend, retired three-star general, Jerry Boykin. Welcome, General. Thank you very much, I'm glad to be with you. Thank you, sir, for supporting me over the years and chaplains and all the troops. Uh, you were, your highest position when you were in the military was Deputy Undersecretary for Intelligence and you're a national security expert. Talk about what you did. Well, as the Deputy Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence, my uh, primary job was to coordinate the various elements of the uh, intelligence community that are uh, by statute uh, subordinate to the Secretary of Defense, like the DIA and the NSA and the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency and then of course the four services. So um, I coordinated their activities and uh, reported to the Secretary of Defense to ensure that there was a good integration of all of the assets and that we were doing what the Secretary uh, needed us to do and also supporting the combatant commanders in the field. And now you're a senior vice president of the Family Research Council, a Christian or pro-family policy organization in Washington, D.C., and they have a conservative foreign policy that supports Israel, and Israel right. is one of our closest allies, right. but they're under threat from the region. Of course, the Middle East is always a powder keg, but what's going on in Syria? Syria is a very difficult and complex situation, and, and I, well, let me say up front that there's no good outcome to this. You either wind up with uh, an evil man like Bashar al-Assad and his thugs, or you wind up with the Muslim Brotherhood and, uh, and its subordinate elements like Al-Qaeda in control in Syria. So there's no good outcome here. Uh, Israel has every right uh, to be concerned though right now as these uh, insurgent elements, uh, some of which uh, we call the Free Syrian Army, which are probably the only reasonable ele element within Syria today, uh, but then there are other elements that have joined them and that in fact have really taken over this uh, movement from them and that's uh, Al-Qaeda and, and uh, other uh, terrorist groups, other jihadist groups, which are fighting against Bashar al-Assad today. Now, uh, it's important to realize that on the side of Bashar al-Assad you have Russia, Iran, and Hezbollah. There are about 7,000 Hezbollah fighters that have gone out of South Lebanon into uh, Syria to fight for Bashar al-Assad, to try to keep him in power. And of course, Iran has threatened to wipe Israel off the map of history. Right. They're sending those rockets through Assad and Syria into Hezbollah, and they're being used against the Jewish people. Right. Uh, but what's the other alternative? I read in the New York Times that the Obama administration and Hillary Clinton's foreign policy has been to support the Muslim Brotherhood, not just in Egypt, but in Syria, the CIA is sending weapons to the Muslim Brotherhood, and it's not just against Assad, they're using that to kill Christians in Syria. That's right, and the biggest problem, and I've, I've been a, a strong opponent of supplying weapons to the rebels, and that's the primary reason is because those weapons will be turned on the Christian enclaves there when uh, Assad falls, if, if he does. Uh, and we've seen it in uh, Egypt, when the Muslim Brotherhood took over there, they've just, just since Mohammed Morsi came to power, they've burned 
just untold numbers of churches. They've killed Christians. They brutalized them another way, and they're fleeing Egypt in record numbers. And just since Morsi was deposed, they've they've burned 47 more churches. Now, the same thing is happening in Syria, and uh, it's going to get worse as soon as the Muslim Brotherhood has control after Bashar al-Assad. They're going to use the weapons we gave them to go after the Christian enclaves. And by the way, Chaplain, that's exactly what happened in Libya at a place called Benghazi. We equipped those people, they killed Muammar Gaddafi, and then they turned around and took the weapons we gave them and attacked us. The same thing's gonna happen in Syria. That is really sad to me, and of course, we all followed Hillary Clinton's testimony in the Benghazi hearings. Uh, what do you hear in the Beltway, and what, what was behind all that? Well, I hear a lot from people that uh, were actually there, which haven't been called to testify yet, but, uh, Hillary Clinton made some really bad decisions early on in this. She she did not send the uh, the FEST team, the, which is an interagency team. She didn't uh, ask for the coordinating subgroup to be convened. She cut out elements of the State Department that should have been there and involved and trying to help. And then her overwhelming concern was the penetration of Libyan airspace. People call it cross-border, but it's really the penetration of their airspace to get boots on the ground to try and save our diplomats there on the night of the 11th of September. And she made bad decisions on all of those. And then I think when she realized just how serious this was, uh, it was too late to recover. She couldn't recover. But remember that she lived, uh, as the first lady, she lived through the events in, in uh uh, Mogadishu, Somalia in 1993, which was a devastating blow to her and, and, and Bill Clinton because they they thought they were going to lose their presidency as a result of the Black Hawk Down event. And then they also remember the Jimmy Carter era where there was a, a, an attempted rescue of 52 Americans in Tehran, and that did bring Carter down. And I think as she was looking at uh, the events unfolding that night, her her very strong concern was what was it going to do to her politically and what was it going to do to Barack Obama's presidency? You know, stepping back from each of those historic events, is it possible just in general in the Muslim world where you have sometimes secular governments who may protect some modicum of religious freedom, but then if you have democracy, then the Muslim Brotherhood is, imposes Islamic Sharia as the law of the land to punish religious freedom. So would, is there any hope for true religious freedom in the Middle East, in these Muslim countries, in any format? No, no, the answer to that, as long as Islam is the dominant uh, religion there, then you cannot have a coexistent relationship between Islam and democracy because one of the first tenets of Islam is there can be no man-made laws. So they're incompatible. Now, that's why when you, when you look at the fact that uh, when Mohammed Morsi came in, he came in talking about freedom and justice. Freedom and justice, they even had a party called the Freedom and Justice Party. But what that means is freedom from man-made laws and justice under Sharia. It's not the same concept that mm -hmm. we think about in terms of freedom and justice. So can there be Sharia and a democracy? No, the answer is absolutely not. They cannot coexist. So I guess, in my opinion, I'm a former Navy chaplain, the only hope for true religious freedom is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, General, I wanna thank you for your expertise and your leadership on these issues. Uh, God bless you and you're welcome back to help us anytime in Jesus name. Thank you, Chaplain, uh, good, good being with you. All right, and we're gonna Take a short break, and when we come back, the most conservative congressman in America, Doug Lamborn from Colorado Springs, explains why we need to support Israel, our closest ally. Fighting the culture war between church and state, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about Israel? Do you wanna help prevent a second Holocaust? Listen, I'm a Christian chaplain, and my website is prayinjesusname.org but we need you to take action and sign a petition there to defend Israel. In fact, the Obama administration is doing the opposite. Here's the first petition we want you to sign and that's stop the US taxpayer funding of the Muslim Brotherhood. Did you know your taxpayer dollars are promoting Islam overseas? Here's a picture of Hillary Clinton. She was laughing during the Benghazi hearings. 
But the bigger story is why as secretary of state was she sending American taxpayer dollars to fund Islam in Egypt and Syria and Libya, not only that, but in the Palestinian authority to oppose Israel. Here's a picture of American F-16s being sent to the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. We need to stop American taxpayer funding of that. And where is this going? Well, it's really moving to Iran. Here's the president of Iran, newly elected guy. Uh, but did you know he's just as radical as Ahmadinejad? This new president, Hassan Rouhani, is a radical Muslim cleric, former chief of their nuclear weapons program. When they build nuclear weapons, who do you think they're gonna target but our friends in Israel? Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu warned us when he gave his speech at the UN that they are in the final stage of building an Islamic bomb. Here's a petition you can sign. Defend Israel and protect the Jewish homeland. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. In fact, petition Congress to move the capital of Israel to Jerusalem and put our US Embassy there. Sign a petition at PrayInJesusName.org and we will fax that to your congressman and it's free. Please take a stand today, defend the Jewish people, visit PrayInJesusName.org to stand with us and stand with Israel. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, this is PIJN News. I'm joined again in the studio by the most conservative congressman in America, Doug Lamborn of Colorado Springs. Welcome back, Congressman. It's great to be here with you. Sir, on this show, we like to defend Israel. And I know you're a big fan of America's relationship with Israel. You've been there many times. Can you talk about what that means to you? Israel is a close democratic ally. It's our closest ally, certainly in the Middle East, if not in the entire world. And I think as Christians, we have a special obligation. Uh, you know, it says in the Bible that where God promised to Abraham, he who blesses you, Israel, I will bless. He who curses you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. I think it's important, if, if you're a believer in scripture especially, that you realize that God has a promise there that it, it'd be good to uh, respect and fulfill. And apart from that, Israel is a democratic ally in a very troubled part of the world. We share intelligence and military technology with them, and they share it back with us, and we've been immeasurably helped by that close relationship we have with Israel. Well, the Middle East is such a powder keg, and you know Israel is a, a Jewish state that is democratic in a way that they allow religious freedom, even for Arabs who live within their borders, uh, they protect their right to practice Islam, even inside of Israel. You've been there, what have you seen? Exactly that. They, they do respect a, um, the ability of people to live by their faith. The holy sites in Jerusalem are administered very fairly. And I think that that really speaks well of their commitment to democracy. And religious freedom. And religious freedom. Now, talk about some of the countries that surround Israel and what are some of the security threats that they face that you're concerned about? Well, this is why the problems in Syria are so important. And a lot of people in America don't understand. Syria is a client state of Iran. And Iran has sworn to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. To Iran, Israel is the little Satan and the United States is the big Satan. What Iran has done with the help of Syria is send tens of thousands of missiles to Hezbollah, a terrorist organization, a Shiite organization in southern Lebanon at the northern border of Israel. And these missiles, 40, 50,000 missiles are pointed to Israel today. Now, I would love to see Syria break off or have it broken off with their relationship with Iran so that that conduit of armaments and missiles stops and then Israel would not have a ever increase. It's already a big enough threat, but we can't see that. I don't want to see that threat get worse and worse and worse. And Syria has been a bad actor in all this, along with Iran. Well, the uh, former president of Iran, Ahmadinejad, uh, quoted, as you said, they're gonna wipe Israel off the map of history. And now this new president, Hassan Rouhani, also of Iran, is the former nuclear weapons chief. You know, they're developing not just nuclear power, but also nuclear weapons, we believe. Uh, and how is that, is he any better? Is he gonna suddenly not use those against Israel or? 
he has a record, unfortunately, of stating publicly, and, and we've uh, uncovered these uh, statements, where they were pretending to negotiate in seriousness about the nuclear programs, but they were really just buying time. So I don't believe that he is a friend of the West, and I believe that he wants to see the nuclear program of Iran continue forward, no matter what he says. I think that that statement reveals where he's really coming from. Iran is also working on intercontinental ballistic missiles. So if they can have the missiles and the nuclear warheads to put on those missiles, that's really bad news. Can you also address uh, the Obama administration and specifically Hillary Clinton's foreign policy for her four years as Secretary of State was to prop up the Muslim Brotherhood. And we see the disaster that was in Egypt. Even the Egyptian people did not want an Islamic constitution. And how does that affect Israel? You know, uh, Morsi, the deposed, recently deposed um, leader of Egypt, because the generals stepped in because he was really doing, uh, violating the rights of so many people. And it was a brutal crackdown. No one uh, condones what the, uh, you know, that people died during that whole process. But Morsi was taking Egypt down an anti-democratic path. And they were uh, going to break off relations with Israel. At least a lot of people were concerned about that. They were letting the Sinai Peninsula become an armed camp and not enforcing any stability or order in that important area right to Israel's border. Allowing weapons to be smuggled into the Gaza Strip? Exactly, exactly. So Hosni Mubarak and now the generals, they are not perfect or were not perfect, but at least they have an interest in stability in the region. They have an interest in working with the United States and they have an interest in working with Israel. And I think that that's something that the Muslim Brotherhood was not interested in doing. Also, look at how the Muslim Brotherhood turned around and when they were, when Morsi was deposed, they burned down 60 to 80 churches to the ground of the yeah. Coptic Christians in Egypt. To me, that shows their true colors. Well, you're right. And if you have a secular government, at least it might protect some of the Christians who want freedom of religion in that region, uh, maybe even in Syria. But now that the Muslim Brotherhood is being you know, weaponized by the Obama administration, they're using those weapons against Christians, and that's the opposite of freedom of religion. This administration, unfortunately, for the last five and a half years has always picked the wrong side. And I don't understand whether that was Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton or now John Kerry. Uh, they always seem to pick the wrong side. <laughs> well, that's very sad. Uh, Congressman, what should we do to support Israel? Well, I like uh, your efforts to get people mobilized to let their congressmen and senators uh, know what their views are. Please keep up that good work. We need to continue our military aid to Israel, which we do every year. And they spend the major majority of that, by the way, back here in the United States, buying uh, defense products that are made by Americans. Uh, Israel is something that, it, 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 there's a special relationship there. I'm troubled that Barack Obama didn't really understand or respect that when he first took office. He's made a few baby steps in the right direction. I hope that that uh, continues, but I don't know why he didn't understand that we have this important and special relationship with Israel. And one last question on this topic. What is the capital of Israel and where should the American embassy be? The capital of Israel is Jerusalem, and yet our embassy is in Tel Aviv. Israel is unique among all the nations of the world in that we and other countries around the world haven't let them pick their own capital. We said, no, you can't make Jerusalem your capital. We're gonna recognize Tel Aviv as where our embassy is. You know, embassies are always where their capital is. We have the land in Israel that could be used for building a capital or an embassy for the US, but we haven't used it for that. It's time to, uh, and Barack Obama has continued to ask for waivers so that he doesn't have to pass the law Congress passed in the 90s to say that the capital of, uh, that the embassy for America should be in the self-declared uh, Israel's capital, which they declare to be Jerusalem. The eternal capital. And we stand with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his negotiations. We all want peace in the Middle East. And the Bible tells us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Let's take a moment and pray for that peace right now. Father in heaven, we do pray. As Christians, we pray in Jesus' name for the Jewish people, that God would protect them and keep your covenant, Father, that you made with Abraham, uh, with David, 
with all the prophets uh, and through Jesus Christ, Father, that you will establish your covenant forever, for eternity with Israel and with Jerusalem and help us to be a blessing to them as Americans. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Congressman, for this interview and uh, we'll be right back after this short commercial. Making your voice heard in our nation's capital. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Introducing FactsCongress.com. Do you care about politics, defending pro-life causes, traditional marriage, and religious freedom? At FactsCongress.com, you can create any petition to Congress, and we will convert your e-petition instantly to a real fax paper on your congressman's desk. And the best part? It's free. Once your voice heard by multiple congressmen at FactsCongress.com, we can blast your petition to all 535 congressmen and senators instantly. And you don't even need a fax machine. Not only do we deliver your petitions instantly, but with our dashboard feature, you can quickly recruit friends on Facebook and Twitter to co-sign your petition. Do you care about a particular cause? You can build a virtual army of supporters at FactsCongress.com. Do you lead a church, faith-based organization, or PAC? We can even help you do fundraising. It's free. Just visit FactsCongress.com and try it out. Make a difference. Sign any petition today at FactsCongress.com. FactsCongress.com. Our thanks to General Boykin. Our thanks to Congressman Lamborn. I want to leave you with this scripture as you visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Sign some of those petitions we have posted, even at FactsCongress.com. And here's what the Bible says about giving. Can you please donate today? We need to stay on the air. I don't take a dime of salary from donations to our nonprofit. The Bible says, pure religion is this, to visit the fatherless and widows. And that's what we're doing. We're caring for orphans, we're caring for widows. Please do what you can to help us stay on the air. God bless you in Jesus' name, and we'll see you on tomorrow's show. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his Ph.D. in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. I'm Dr. Chaps. Have you ever seen a TV news anchor pray the news? That's what we do at PIJN News right here on the NRB Network. Set your DVR for these showtimes.